questions and I was going to do a demo. But as every good demo, it was not working, so it's going to be a presentation. Um, and because you all came, uh, it was not very fair for me calling for 15 minutes before the, the catch-up and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sick. <coughs> so, yeah. so it's going to be a presentation. Um, what I hope you take out of the presentation is um, my understanding of manufacturing 4.0. Um, and what I mean by that is I've been doing manufacturing integrations. What it means is you take uh, big, big software system management systems and you integrate that with your shop floor equipment systems and you exchange information. You capture information from your shop floor and then you, you record this information in your manufacturing, in your management system. So I have been doing that for many, many years and it's a very hot topic at the moment. Um, why, why do we need to care about that? Because today um, it's something which is very challenged by everything which is coming online. So when we talk about manufacturing, you have to think that, I don't know, how many of you have been to a factory, factory shop floor, walking around shop floor, seeing people working on the shop floor? Okay, so basically if today you go on the shop floor, you're going to have people with digital devices capturing information, and you're going to have people with a piece of paper capturing information and taking notes of what's happening, and then they're going to record this information in their ERP system after that. So basically today, if I go to a shop floor and I, get, um, I, I go to a, even a medical device company, they will have a piece of paper and they will take notes, they will record this information, and after, if they want to analyze this information, maybe they're going to put it into Excel, which is first step, and then second step, they will actually put it into a system where they can do some analysis. So what, when we talk about manufacturing 4.0, we're actually talking about a gap which is huge, and considering that today we have, um, we have IoT, so we have um, industrial data collections, that means that I have an equipment, I can capture information directly from my equipment, I have machine learning, I have business integration, and, and the one goal of that is to do uh, improve, improve business processes. Um, a bit more into the, the details, what we, what we have, um, so it's, I'm sorry, it's a bit SAP centric, but it doesn't really matter so much. Uh, what we do have at, uh, at this part, and what we are really interested in, is this layer. So here we have manufacturing equipment. So we have PLC, which are like programming, or, um, programming systems where you can program your, what's going to happen on the shop floor. This is uh, basically an engine, for those who are not familiar, it's IO, uh, it's input and output, electrical input and output. So you would actually be able to write program, store it in your PLC, and it will execute the logic of your production line. So if you have, if you have a Raspberry Pi, this is what you would be doing by controlling the IO. So you could actually write the code, which is going to control the IO, and this is going to be executed on the shop floor. Then we have other layers where we capture the information from the, from the equipments which are on the, on the shop floor and from the, from the PLCs or from the, from the automation systems. And then we have a web platform. So this is where we have um, web pages and we are able to provide interfaces to the user. And then after that, we have, um, we have additional business software. So this is where you're going to do your warehouse management. This is where you're going to do your integrations for the business processes. This is where you're going to do um, analytics at higher levels. And this is where you're going to build also machine learning uh, algorithm, basically. So to keep it real um, and, and not talk about a uh, big thing, when we talk about IoT and when we talk about IIoT uh, in, in the industrial space, we actually talk about gathering the information from, from the shop floor. So this is either you're going to have a sensor, so that can be a light sensor, that can be temperature sensors, that can be pressure sensors, that can be additional sensors that you are familiar with in electronics that you can put in place in your, in your manufacturing and you can capture this information that you are going to aggregate after um, into, uh, into a platform. The, whatever the platform is going to be, whether it's going to be uh, uh, in the cloud or whether it's going to be a local system on the, on the shop floor. Based on this information, you're going to be able to provide more information to the user, to the operator, the guy who is working on the, sh on the, on the line, 
so they can, they're going to be able to improve the process. And I think this is where it's very important, is when, you, when we design uh, solutions like that, what is very important is to always think about who is going to use the information. Because you, you're going to develop a web page, you're going to develop uh, an application. At the end of the day, the user is going to see information, but he's going to be able also to interact with this information. And for example, that can be pushing back information to the shop floor. So if I have an IoT device here, I gather the information, but I'm going also to push back information to my, to my production line. So maybe I'm going to, um, I'm going to send uh, what is the next product which is going to be, uh, to be produced. What is going to be, um, what is going to be the next um, parameters that I want to update. What, so the point, one of the first points which is uh, a takeaway is you need to think about building applications which are bidirectional. It's not just about gathering the information from the shop floor, it's also pushing back the information to the shop floor. Um, so for that we have, you have industrial protocols like OPC, OPC DA, which are very familiar, uh, very old protocols which are working quite well and which enable you to interact with, uh, with the shop floor equipment. Um, the, next, the next step after you've, you've integrated your, your user in the, in the loop, you need to gather and consolidate this information. So the user has collected the information, he has interacted with it, but then there is a next level, and the next level is how you consolidate this information in database you're going to aggregate this information and you'll be able to report on what's happening there. So if I have an operator which is collecting, for example, um, weights, or is going to collect uh, the quality of, uh, of what is produced on the, on the production line, he's going to declare, for example, there are scraps, there are, uh, there are wastage, they, they are um, rework. This information needs to be collected into uh, a database, and then we collect this information and you actually push it to a management system. Because everything which is happening on the shop floor is also, has also an impact, a financial impact. So you push, you push down uh, the information which is collected at this level, you make it available for your user, but then at the end of the day, you will be also leveraging into your ERP system, in your management systems. So you can actually capture the cost of what's happening on the shop floor. Then what is, um, what is happening then after that, you have reporting. And the report actually enables you to, do, uh, to track what are the parts, what are the main defaults, what are the main parts which, um, which can be improved. For example, you can have reports on your production lines. You can, you can have, there are things which are called like overall equipment efficiency. So you have uh, an equipment how much time my equipment should be produced, so they are like, uh, how much time my equipment sh is available, how much, uh, what is the quantity that should be produced, and what is uh, the, um, the quality of the actual production. And if you, they are all factors that if you multiply together, you have a very good idea of what's happening. So if it's my, uh, if it's my coffee machine, for example, my coffee machine should only be working in the morning, theoretically. Uh, there should always be uh, coffee in the, in the machine. If I go to the coffee machine and there is no more coffee in it, then there is a downtime. I cannot make my coffee. So there is a waste of, of time that actually um, my coffee machine should be available and it's not available. Then um, I can actually report on that. I can report on the cause or you should be reporting on the cause. And based on those factors, then you can actually decide what is going to be the next steps, what is going to be the improvements that you want to put in place uh, for, your, for your process. Um, down times, um, we have a range of softwares here. I mean, basically it's um, management, warehouse management, enterprise management. It's about capturing the cost, about capturing the availability of, of, uh, of goods. And it's also about um, exchanging the information which are in all the systems. Um, it's what is the main point here in, in, in this uh, topics of manufacturing for the zero is really the fact that you have information which are stocked in different systems. So whether it's going to be the production lines, whether it's going to be your management systems, whether it's going to be um, the, the piece of analysis that you have, and you're going to exchange the information between the systems. So you're going to be able to improve the process. Um, the downtime <coughs> of, my of my production lines is enabling me to also reschedule, for example, um, trucks or production. 
what I need to produce, what I've sold to my customer, is something that I need on my production line. So it's, it's, all, um, it's all the exchange which is, uh, which is there, and that needs to happen in order to, to improve the, the process. Um, First, so that's the first topic of manufacturing for the zero for me. It's, it's integration. You need to be able to integrate the different uh, pieces of information which are today in your, in your factory. And we've been doing that for 15 years, 20 years. Like the pro it's not a new problem. We're still replacing, and we're still replacing Excel and paper today. So it's still some, something which is, uh, which is important. Then um, where it's also challenging is the way to capture information. There is way more is to capture information. So this is, um, this is your Raspberry Pi, but this is also all the captors that you can put on your production lines, which are generating a lot of information that you need to aggregate and then you need to analyze after. So it's very easy to send everything to the cloud. Um, you can have, you can have a, a, a Raspberry Pi, you can have MQTT on your Raspberry Pi, and you can push sensor information, IOs information to the cloud, and you can do um, analysis after that directly in the cloud. You can also, then the next part, which is also very important, is, so this is the big data analysis, but the last part is also the machine learning part. Machine learning is, is not a specific domain which is coming just at the, at the end of the process, because today machine learning is something that you should be you should be thinking of machine learning when you're actually capturing your information. So this is where you, you, you have um, a categorization algorithm which is going to tell you what is good, what is bad. So this is something which is running directly on the shop floor. Then you have, um, you have a predictive algorithm which is going to tell you if your equipment um, requires maintenance or is scheduled to, uh, to have a repair in the, in the, next, coming, in the next coming days. And after, it's also enabling you to, do, to run simulations and es uh, um, estimation, modelization, so you can actually uh, estimate what is the capacity of your production lines. You can actually gather more information, so at a, at a higher level, and have more, more reliable estimates and evaluations of your, of your company. So it's a combination of uh, the integration, the combination of the data and, and the, the, the data analysis that you can do, the gathering of much more information, and also after the, all the machine learning algorithm, knowing that machine learning algorithm is not something which is in a specific area, it's something which is going across all the, all the, manufacturing, uh, all the manufacturing parts. So um, that's the theoretical part. The practical part would be to show you uh, something um, with less uh, buzzwords, but where you, you, if you compare today what somebody is going to do with a piece of paper, and you can conceptualize it, we can imagine it, visualize it. If you take a piece of paper and you have to record three weights, and you have to record the exact product which is on the production line, or if you have today the exact same equivalence and you're gathering automatically the weights and you're capturing the weight information and you record it automatically in the systems, you gain time. You, you actually have more insight in your, in your production. You can do predictive. You can actually identify straight away what is, um, what is going to be the, uh, what are going to be the, best part, the good part, the bad parts. You can actually look, up, look that up with information that you have in your, in your management systems. You can know which suppliers provide me those types of products. So you there is a lot, there is a realm and a quantity of opportunities there which is, which is very, uh, uh, very impressive. Um, I have some, some uh, takeaways or lessons learned from, from, um, from implementing this type of project. Um, <coughs> basically, I think really at the, at the, fund the fundamental things is when you try to, to create, a, if you have an idea, the idea that you're going to have is not based on the, should not be based on the technology. Uh, and I know that technology is important, and specifically here we're talking about technology. And, and, but the point here is have a, a business concept. You need to have an idea which is going to bring value to the, to the, to the company or to the, to the people who are going to use what you're developing. 
If it's paperless, paperless is an objective, not the fact that you're doing scannings or you're doing uh, data entries or you're using uh, um, Raspberry Pi. So f focus first on the objective. And then the next part is how is going to be the user using your product? Like I code an application in my Raspberry Pi, what do I do with it? Is it going to be collecting plenty of information that never every, nobody is going to look at it? So at each step, you need to keep track of who is going to use this information. Because if you just take a production line or anything, you capture many, plenty of information, you send it to the cloud. The moment you don't know what you've captured and you don't know what you produced and you don't know what was your objective on the production line, you lost track of the value that you can, you can actually get, uh, get out of it. Um, and People and rollouts, I think it's important to have um, people who are very hands-on in terms in these types of uh, product. So here we have very hands-on product, but uh, people, sorry, but uh, it's also um, you also need to take you need to take the time. So when you're developing these types of applications, we need to um, have a quick iterations in terms of uh, developing the developing the systems. You, if you're training a machine learning algorithm, so you're trying to predict something, it's not going to necessarily work the, 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 the first time. So you need to find the, pro the problems, a list of problems, focus your effort on one or two problems, and then build iteratively on, uh, on those types of things. And uh, after, in terms of performance and technicality, um, be careful, because actually in terms of uh, volume of information which is created, uh, we're not very, uh, it's everybody talking about manufacturing 4.0 will take pressure and temperature as an example. If you go to a shop floor and you go to uh, a factory, one equipment is producing 400 data points and it's producing 400 data points multiplied by uh, 1,000 per minute. So the quantity of information and the volume of information which is generated by the systems is actually huge. And it is important to keep that in mind because if you want to do machine learnings uh, on the shop floor or near the production line, you need to keep in mind that it doesn't necessarily make sense to ship everything to your to the cloud and then to do analysis after. It makes more sense like you have things like uh, machine learning services uh, from Microsoft, or you can use machine uh, uh, Apache, or you can lose. Uh, Different, uh, different systems that where you can train your algorithms and where you can run them directly close to the, close to the data. And uh, after, I think, in terms of uh, skill set, uh, today if you have these types, when you have these types of products and the skills that you have, it's, it's basically, it's both technical, it's development, it's uh, a bit of engineering, it's a bit of machine learning, and so it's basically a, a skill set that you need to, to gather and you put together to, to, get, uh, to get an idea of uh, how, you, how you can run this type of, of project. So the, and so the hands-on part will come at a later stage, but uh, for the moment it's just, uh, <laughs> just, a, just a talk, I'm sorry. <laughs> but. Any questions or... Yeah. What were you going to demonstrate? Um, for me, I think when we talk about manufacturing 4.0, we are always, uh, it's always about IoT, machine learning, exactly everything that I put in my slide is this is the whole thing, the whole package. So you have it all. But the thing, the reality is if you take a piece of paper, you ask somebody to input number on the piece of paper, to then take this piece of paper to record them into an Excel spreadsheet and to have a graphic. And you do exactly the same process with integrations where information is captured automatically, the data is entered automatically, and you have predictive algorithms running. You saved, you saved all, the, all the time and effort which was spent into copying number with all the default that it has. You have it into, in, in five seconds and you have all the additional benefits. So you experience it. It's something that you don't, um, you don't need to have the big names to understand that this is it's, it's powerful. Yeah. So, and basically, yeah, sorry. Uh, what does SAP technology do? Uh, it's just uh, SAP is a, a software editor. So but whether you're going to use uh, Microsoft or you're going to use Amazon or you're going to use uh, Alibaba or uh, 
it's, it's a software editor. You, you can, today, if you have Microsoft, uh, with Microsoft, you can, uh, the cloud Microsoft, or if you have uh, ERP Microsoft, it's just uh, an enterprise resource planning, so that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you give an example of uh, actually in industry or client that you have to do something like this before? Yeah, um, I have examples in the uh, automotive industry. So we, we have uh, factories where they, collect, they have the production line and they're capturing the information from the plastic injection, for example. So when you capture the information from the, the plastic injection machines, then after that you can do statistical process control. You can automatically uh, declare what is produced, um, you, and you you can run uh, you can run big data models. Or you have uh, electronics is using a lot of uh, statistical process control, also, and a lot of integration. So uh, food and beverage, food and beverage. If you have a, a um, a line which is producing bottles or liquids. Um, all, I've worked with uh, all of those guys. So, uh, when you're designing this uh, factory of the future, yeah. are you, uh, what can you automate? What can you automate and what cannot be automated? Do, do you have examples? So, uh, yes, you. There is a cost. There is, a co there, is, there is typically a cost into aut automation, right? If you're going to put um, the, the piece of paper, the examples of, of piece of paper, if you're going to replace somebody who is uh, placing, just placing um, uh, samples and doing the analysis of the sample by an, automat uh, an automated system, the cost here is, if you want to automate it, it's going to cost you, let's say, between 50K and 100K to do that. The the flexibility that you need, the person who is doing the job at the moment, and the robot to do the same job, is, is it's more interesting to have a person doing the job because there is more intelligence in a person to do this job than in a robot, and it's, it's also it's going to be cheaper with a, with a robot. So that's one, one example. And then there are plenty of problems we don't know how to solve them. Um, so we have we have very good machine learning algorithm. We can do very, uh, I mean, you can do very, a lot of effort, but like training, uh, there was a talk by IBM a few, a few weeks ago here in Singapore. To train an algorithm or to put an algorithm is going to take between three months and six months project, right? So you need to focus your resources on, proj on problems which are making sense. That's, that's also a priority and resources constraint there. Stop. Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.